The red planet is slowly bringing about a new space race. As humanity works towards making interplanetary travel possible, a few countries have brought their A-game to the table. At the forefront, we have the United States, followed very closely by China, and then Russia. In fact, Russia is now making big plans to construct the first nuclear power plant on Mars. But how exactly will they do this? And will they really be able to pull it off? You see, the idea of building a human colony on Mars not only relies on terraforming, but also on creating sustainable energy for inhabitants. And this is where Russia comes in. It's no secret that a section of Russia's Roscosmos Space Agency is now moving forward with plans to develop the first and potentially largest nuclear power station on Mars, with the objective of powering a Russian space base that will be built on the Red Planet. Arsenal Design Bureau, the company in charge of the project, is constructing an interplanetary space tug known as Zeus that will ferry and offload a nuclear reactor onto the Martian surface. The space tug will be built using a nuclear-powered electric propulsion system that will deliver payloads throughout the entire solar system. In fact, Roscosmos' boss, Dmitry Rogozin, says that Zeus will also be used in visiting other planets such as Jupiter for excavations of vital resources, as well as in the search for alien life. It will even be given a parachute landing system to allow it to successfully lower payloads onto the surface of Mars. Russia is hoping to begin the flight testing of Zeus around 2030. But wait a minute, can Russia even afford to carry out space missions of this scale? The Russian government spent less than a tenth on its space program compared to what the US government did in 2020. So could they be biting off more than they can chew? Turns out, they've got a pretty solid plan in place. Russia is planning to seriously ramp up their plans for space over the next 10 years. We're talking about Russian space bases, sending missions to Mars, constructing a moon base with the collaboration of China, and of course, building and operating the first nuclear power plant on Mars. Russia has, so far, done some pretty solid groundwork to build their nuclear-powered space tug Zeus. All they need now is political goodwill from Russian bigwigs in the government to increase spending. And according to reports, things are looking pretty good. After all, does Russia really want to lose to the US and China in the up-and-coming space race? The first country to properly colonize another planet will have a threatening advantage. So what are some of the other functions that Zeus will have? Obviously, something of this size and magnitude won't just have exploration and transportation tasks. Well, according to top Russian engineers and designers assigned to the project, Zeus will also be able to disable enemy spacecraft systems by disrupting the control systems of the opposing ship through the use of an electromagnetic impulse. If this doesn't deter the enemy, then Zeus will resort to firing a powerful laser beam that will completely neutralize the spacecraft. This is as Russian as it gets. Now we know how serious Russia is about this. The designers, who are presently based at the Keldish Research Center, have also proposed that Zeus be built with an essential component of Russia's air defense network, which is capable of detecting targets from orbit and transmitting this information to ground-based missile systems. You would think Russian engineers woke up and began formulating plans to build a nuclear power plant on Mars during the pandemic, right? Well, this isn't the first time that the idea of a space-based nuclear power plant has been proposed by the country. In fact, Russia's been planning for the construction of an interplanetary spacecraft to ferry a nuclear power plant since 2010. But it was only in 2019 that a detailed concept of the space tug was presented for the first time at the MAX International Aviation and Space Show outside Moscow, providing a more detailed presentation of the workings at the Army 2020 Forum. In December of 2020, Roscosmos went a step further by signing a $56.5 million contract with the Arsenal Design Bureau to begin experimental design work for the construction of Zeus. The project is expected to be completed sometime in 2024, with experimental flight testing to commence sometime in 2030. So, will the deployment of Zeus be successful? Well, having a look at Roscosmos' previous accomplishments, they completed the construction of the first Russian-owned space station, Mir, which de-orbited in 2001. However, the Russian space program has faced its share of problems. First, as we hinted at earlier, the program has somewhat lacked funding to realize its more ambitious goals. Also, some of the funds that have been used have allegedly been redirected to questionable projects, including the current construction of a 250,000 square foot meter office in close proximity to the famous Khrunichev space rocket factory based in Moscow. Is it really necessary? Over the past half century, Russia's record in space milestones has declined considerably since the Cold War. We should remind you that this is the same country that sent the first satellite to space, had the first man and woman in space, and constructed the first space station. However, 21st century Russia isn't the vibrant space bully it once was. For example, in 2020, Russia spent only about $3.58 billion on its space program, just $260 million more than Japan, and much lower than France who spent $4.04 billion. 
Russia's space budget was also nowhere near that of China, who spent $8.85 billion, and the United States, who spent a mind-blowing $47.69 billion on their space project. This, as well as other factors, has left the country that once enjoyed the status of the pioneering space country lagging significantly behind space programs like NASA and that of China, who continually deploy high-tech equipment and rovers to capture images of the Martian landscape. But now, Russian engineers are hopeful that Zeus could change everything. Once completed, it'll be deployed at the Lagrange point between the Sun and Mars, which is the point in space where the gravitational forces of these two bodies are the strongest. The tug's onboard communication transmitters and sensors will play an important role in creating a high-speed channel for the transmission of information to the Earth from the Martian surface and from the spacecraft orbiting the planet. But the question is, why is nuclear power so important in space travel? Well, if you look at the simplicity of it, space travel is all about mass. It's difficult to travel through interplanetary space if you're not shooting a large concentration of mass super fast in the opposite direction to give you high acceleration. You also have to lose a lot of mass in the opposite direction if you want to come to a complete stop. A lot of mass also needs to be released laterally to maneuver the spacecraft. So fuel is the most important aspect of any space mission. For humanity to successfully set up a colony on the planet, we're going to need a whole lot of energy. It'll be needed to power the life support systems, heat food, and so on. Which form of energy is best suited for that on the Martian surface? First of all, the fossil fuels we're currently using are super heavy and finite, so they aren't feasible for a long-term stay. And solar panels won't be too effective considering the dim light present from the sun on Mars. Besides, even if we did try to make that work, we would require tons and tons of panels and billions of batteries just to power a tiny colony. Oh, and did we forget to mention the powerful dust storms that periodically plague the Martian surface? They would cover and damage the panels, and so maintaining them will be time-consuming. So they can't be the only source of energy. One mistake on Mars, and it's lights out. But hold on, Mars also has powerful windstorms. So what about wind energy? Unfortunately, even with the high-velocity storms on the red planet, Mars's atmosphere is too thin to turn anything as big as a sturdy wind turbine. So don't be fooled by the Hollywood movie The Martian. Doing something like that would be impossible. Oh, did we forget hydropower? Well, despite Mars having sufficient water reserves, they're all frozen ice. So it's impossible to build a workable hydropower plant at the moment. It would take years before we could unfreeze all these water reserves and convert them to hydropower. Biomass is also not feasible, as it will be tough to grow plants on the Martian regiolith, as it has no nutritional value like the soil on Earth. In fact, we'll have to carry a lot of soil from Earth just to grow anything on the Martian surface. And lastly, what about geothermal energy? You see, there are still a number of active volcanoes on the Tarsus region of Mars. The only problem is that Mars has no subsurface water convention cells required to run a geothermal plant on the planet. Therefore, the most practical and affordable energy source to be built on Mars is a nuclear reactor. First and foremost, nuclear fuel is the most energy dense, clocking in at 80 million megajoules per kilogram when compared to petroleum that has 50 megajoules per kilogram. To put that into perspective, the standard industrial battery only has one megajoule per kilogram. And this is why Russia is aiming to build the largest nuclear reactor on Mars. But aside from this, NASA is also developing its very own nuclear reactor for Mars. This reactor will play a critical role in NASA's upcoming expeditions to the Red Planet. According to reports, NASA is looking at three expeditions of four to six astronauts for a stay of about 500 days. Each of these expeditions will land at three different locations on Mars to explore the terrain and study the environment. The first expedition expected to arrive on the surface will carry unmanned cargo landers which will deliver the payload of the nuclear power system, propellant production required to return back to Earth, as well as the Mars Ascent vehicle for returning to the orbiter. The power system will initially be used to convert the Martian CO2 atmosphere into oxygen that will be cryogenically cooled and stored in the Mars Ascent vehicle. Once enough propellant has been stored in the vehicle and the landing environment has met all requirements, the crew will depart Earth and travel with a Mars transfer vehicle to begin their 200-day trip to Mars. After entering Mars's orbit, the crew will gradually begin their entry, descend, and land where the pre-deployed cargo landers will be waiting for them. While there is an awful lot of logistics involved in exploring Mars, the potential of conquering the planet could be the greatest human feat of the 21st century and nuclear energy could be the key to making this future possible. So with that being said, we've come to the end of the video. Let us know what you think about Russia's nuclear ambitions on Mars. Will they be able to beat the US and China? We hope you enjoyed the video, and don't forget to leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and click on the notification bell to get more enriching content in the tech world.